London is the fourth most expensive city in the world to live in. And this is why on Social Soda, we wanted to talk about housing because some people are struggling to pay their rent or to have a roof above their head. We wanted to highlight this situation and hopefully it will help someone or maybe it will help the calligrapher and the homeless person who shared with us his story of being a rough sleeper. He also showed us his workstation at Preta Mouge in Chelsea. My name's Roy Palmer, I'm 65 years old and I'm a calligrapher, freelance. I've been homeless now for three and a half months in total. I split up with my girlfriend and she traded me in for a younger model. <laughs> How long did I sleep last night? Perhaps an hour? I don't really sleep. It's You cat nap. You maybe catch 10 minutes and you think you've been asleep for an hour, but you haven't. You look at your watch and 10 minutes has passed. So. I guess the most difficult thing is that you become invisible to people um, and people just don't care. Even friends, when you say you've become homeless, they treat it like it's a sickness. I'm fortunate in that I have my calligraphy and people see me doing that and they come and talk to me about that and if I'm lucky, they might buy something off me. A lot of people think when you, you say you're homeless, they look at you and they go, I don't believe you're homeless. And I say, why not? Well, look at what you're wearing. I say, oh, what does a homeless person look like? I had a friend, he'd let me keep my clothes at his place. He had a small studio and I'd go in the morning, have a shower, change my clothes. So that was always well presented. If you're well presented, that's half the battle. People will then talk to you. If you're scruffy, dirty, dirty clothes, smelly, then people don't want to know at all. So. I met a guy a few years ago called Steve. He's the CEO of Ovo Energy. He put me up in that Hotel Lily for five weeks nearly. And then he said, find a uh, studio and I'll front the deposit and the first three months rent. I found a studio local to here. He paid the deposit and three months rent in advance and I moved in there last week. Saturday night somebody had had a bath in the studio above me and water was pouring through my ceiling because it was right above me. So I've had to last two nights be out in the open again. No organisations have exactly helped. Uh, Hammersmith and Fulham Council said that I'd made myself intentionally homeless because I had a flat from them and gave that up and to move in with my girlfriend. And so they said, that's making myself intentionally homeless. And because I'm a single male, I don't come under their priorities. And how do you feel today? Angry. Yeah, I'm angry that they just let people die in the cold, virtually. Nobody seems to be getting any real help. It's only uh, voluntary organisations that seem to be caring about. But the councils, they don't really give a shit. They should look at them, take a serious look at themselves in this weather and say, do we really want people on the streets who can earn a living, but we don't give them the opportunity and we put them right at the bottom of the housing list? The Conservative government, they don't give a flying fuck about homeless people. If they did, there's enough empty buildings there's enough spaces for them to solve the problem overnight, but they don't. The only time the government do anything is, with homeless people, is if they want to clear them out of an area 
because tourists are coming in. It's a problem that's going to go on for years and years and years. They'll never get rid of homelessness. But I don't think they want to. I don't think they care, to be honest with you. Other people that are homeless through situations similar to mine, we seem to help each other. We tell each other where to get free food from, um, where not to go. Is that comforting? Yes, it is comforting. Because you know that other people, you're not the only person in that situation. Um, and we give each other tips, who to go and see in authority, like uh, Citizens Advice Bureau, places like that, council. <laughs> When I was 12, I had only one interest in life, and that was football. My father said to me, if you think you're playing football every day this year, think again. My father was a sign writer, so he knew about lettering, and he was also a calligrapher. So the first week, I was mixing paints for him, and then the second week, he threw a book at me with all different fonts in it, a pad of paper, and a carpenter's pencil because I had a, a wide, wide nib. He said, practice making letters as they'll stand you in good stead one day. For years and years it's been there. In the last four or five years, it's really become a passion. Well, I was a member of the Calligraphy and Lettering Arts Society and I passed an exam with them, which qualifies me to teach calligraphy. Whether I ever will, but I don't know if I'd have the patience to actually teach somebody. I sit in prep every day, do calligraphy and people buy it sometimes. But I have other things I, I do, silk screen printing, mirror engraving. These are all things that I was doing when I was with my girlfriend because we had a shed that I turned into a studio. That's all gone. <laughs> It keeps me satisfied in my, mentally. Sometimes, yeah, it goes very well. I met a lady the other week who's got a gallery, pop-up gallery. She's letting me do stuff in her gallery and she's got a load of my calligraphy that she's going to try and sell. The pens I use, they're felt pens, although I have dip pens. And the paper I use is uh, 160 GSM. I need a ruler and a pencil, a pencil sharpener and an eraser and I can work. What do I want to say to people who have helped me? I want to say thank you very, very much because your help has been enormous and it's also been life-saving. It's given me a sense of self-esteem and self-worth. Where can people find my artwork? They can find it on Instagram. And my Instagram account is the scribe 001. If anybody is out there watching this and wants to help homeless people, myself included, then please take the opportunity to do something good for somebody. Even if it's just to buy somebody a cup of coffee. Every little helps.